Greetings, denizens of the Empire. It's Jabara here. When we turn our attention to geography, we tend to immediately conjure up images of maps into our minds. Even in a historical context, when we ponder the ancient explorers of the past, the default images in our heads consist of old, off-white or discolored maps drawn by European cartographers, or to a lesser extent, Arab and Chinese cartographers. Maps with varying degrees of accuracy, but most still portraying a fairly accurate depiction of geographical landmarks, coastlines, and political boundaries. However, the idea of depicting the world on what we consider a map is a relatively new concept. Even the ancient Romans seldom drew maps of their lands, relying on landmarks, the stars, and their vast network of roads for navigation. In pre-colonial West Africa, comparatively speaking, very few maps that were drawn by its indigenous people survived to the present day, even when these traditions became more widespread in Europe. West Africans navigated their lands and demarcated territorial boundaries in a variety of manners, including methods analogous to those employed by the Romans. However, this isn't to say that no maps existed at all. Today, we will discuss potentially the oldest known map in existence that was drawn in West Africa by West Africans themselves. I'd like to start off by thanking African History Extra for compiling this information. Much of what will be discussed in this video today was compiled in one of many interesting African History newsletters which you can access for free here if you subscribe to their website. Much of what you will be listening to in this video will be verbatim from this article, but in a more summarized format. I'll leave a link to it down below. This is an absolutely excellent source of well-researched and highly detailed information about African history, and it is a privilege to partner with this organization. Today, the Hausa language is one of the most widely known and spoken in West Africa, and Hausa culture and influence are becoming increasingly more widely known and profound in not just Africa, but the world. The release of the Netflix original film Amina in 2021 provides a true testament to this. An epic based on medieval Hausa warrior princess Amina who hailed from the Kingdom of Zhaozhou in the 16th century. However, this prominent influence is only a recent phenomenon. Despite their ancient origins, the Hausa kingdoms were relatively unknown outside a small region in West Africa until just a few centuries ago, and to understand the significance of the map that we will be discussing, it is important to understand the relative obscurity of Hausa kingdoms in the past. During the mid-14th century, the globetrotter Ibn Battuta set himself on a journey through West Africa into the region from where many of his peers, the early scholars, merchants, and travelers of West Africa who crisscrossed the Mediterranean world originated. Batuta described various West African states and regions using local ethnonyms and toponyms that he derived from his West African guests, providing important first-hand information that made much of West Africa cartographically visible on external maps, except for one region, the Hausa Lands. I just want to briefly shout out Happy Hippo Herbals for making this video possible. Happy Hippo Herbals is a provider of numerous alternative medicine products, some of which I use regularly to help me stay focused and feel less anxious in my daily life. You can receive not a 15%, but now a 20% discount on all Happy Hippo Herbals products using my promo code FN10. Go to fromnothing.info slash market for a direct link to their website and other brands that I've worked with in the past. The first explicit external account of the house lands was made by Leo Africanus in The Description of Africa, written in 1526. It goes into vivid detail on the political, economic, and social character of the city-states in stark contrast to the city's relative cartographic invisibility prior. Leo's vivid accounts of the house lands which scholars agree with secondhand information received in the city of Gao was the result of the political and intellectual integration of the Hausa lands into the larger West African networks, which initially resulted in external scholars moving into Hausa lands and later Hausa scholars moving outside the Hausa lands and thus transmitting more accurate information about their home country. 
By the late 15th century, a series of political and commercial innovations made the house land a magnet of West African and North African scholars, who then increased external knowledge about house lands. These included the Timbuktu scholar Akit al Tambukti, who taught in Kano in the late 1480s, the Maghrebian scholar al Magili, who passed through Kano and Katsina in 1492, and the Maghrebian scholar Makluf al Babali, who taught in Kano and Katsina in the early 1500s. Leo's lengthy account of the House of City States features the most visible outward markers of Hausaization, including the architecture, walls, farm lanes, crafts industry, and trade. He describes the cloth weavers and leather workers of Gobir, the artisans and merchants of Kano, as well as the abundant grain, rice, millet, and cotton of Zamfara. But most importantly, he notes the fence walls of the cities, describing Kano that it has a surrounding wall made of beams and clay. It was these features of the fence of walls and extensive cultivation, as well as trade and handicraft industry, that became the most visible cartographic markers of the House of City States, transforming them into cartographically visible polities and external accounts. While the cities were by then fairly well known in external accounts, most referred to the language of the region, the people living within it, and the lands they controlled using exonyms derived from the Empire of Bornu, which was for long the suzerain of several Hausa city-states. For example, in the mid-18th century, the German cartographer Karsten Nieber was informed by a Hausa servant living in Tripoli about the lands of Afnu and Bornu. The servant's language is also called Afnu, the word for Hausa in Bornu. However, the use of such exonyms and external accounts immediately gave way to more accurate endonyms once the Hausa began defining their own region to external writers. In an account written by German traveler Frederick Hornman, based on information given to him by a traveling Hausa scholar, as well as his own travels in West Africa during 1797, he writes that, Eastward from Timbuktu lies Sudan, Hausa, or Asna. The first is the Arabic, the second is the name used in the country, and the last is the Bornuan name. This introduces to readers the first explicit use of the ethnonym Hausa in external texts. Horman then continues describing the people, language, and states of the Hausa that were doubtlessly given to him by the Hausa scholar, writing that, As to what the inhabitants themselves call Hausa, I had, as I think, very certain information. One of them, Marabut, gave me a drawing of the situation of the different regions bordering on each other, which I here give as I received it. The map drawn here is a copy made by Hornman of the one drawn for him by Marabut, the house of scholar and question, and is very likely the oldest map in existence drawn by West Africans of their own lands. For a much more detailed and extensive description of the history of the Hausa lands and how they came to prominence in the outside world, be sure to subscribe to isaacsamuel.substack.com. It is 100% free. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.